Right. And um, and I don't come from a learning background where I was a great student. I wasn't, you know, my highest grade in school was a C plus. And when I got a C plus, I did the happy dance. <laughs> and um, and so I didn't have a background where studying was natural for me. Mm. But when I realized that if I go study something and I learn it, I own it, it's mine now, right. man, it was crazy because all through school I struggled. I, the last time I took an English class, my English teacher told me I was the weakest writer she ever met in her entire life. Lovely. Yeah, lovely. And the same year I took a speech class and my speech teacher, he said, quote unquote, Miss Nichols, I recommend you never speak in public, that you get a desk job. Oh. And so I... That's mean. Yeah, it just, it's just, you know, it was, it was demotivated people, mm. um, sad people, hurt people hurt, sad people make other people sad. Hurt Bottom people line, don't take it personal, hurt people hurt. That's really rad. I don't want to derail your story because your story yeah. is amazing. We are going to finish that tale. But hurt people hurt, hurt sad people. people are sad. That's uh, They make other people sad. Sad people make yeah. other people sad. Because people love company. Everywhere you are, you want company. And so without taking it personal, just see where people are. And so a part of that was I had to see who I was hanging around. Mm. And, you know, miserable people want company, you know. And I had to literally be willing to not only relocate my mind, but relocate my body so I can relocate my finances and relocate my possibility, relocate my son's future. I was very clear the future my son was gonna have if I didn't do something. And I was not subscribing to that, not on my watch. My son's father went to prison when he was eight months old. And he's been in prison since my son was eight months old. Whoa! My son turns 22 this year. My son is an African-American male child living in South Central Los Angeles when at that time he had a 66% chance rate of going to prison, not on my watch. So I was willing to be radical. Mm. See, most people want the convenience of transformation without the inconvenience of required, busting, yes, required yeah. for transformation. So my grandmother says, and I love to repeat this, your conviction, what you're passionate about, your conviction and your convenience don't live on the same block. <laughs> They ain't even in the same zip code. So if you want to have a conviction for something, you have to sign up, sign up to be inconvenienced. We're trying to find convictions and passion and breakthrough on the inside of our box. Well, when you realize that the box doesn't even exist, like someone made up, oh, you're playing outside the box. So we all bought into, there's a box. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't live in, I don't even own a box. I don't even, I don't even want to get in your box. <laughs> like, mm -mm, you better come out here because I ain't getting in there. And so when you start thinking like that, Tom, all of a sudden, everything is possible. Mm. So I, you know, pe I disrupt people when I say, you want to make me extraordinary because it lets you off the hook. God, that's good. I'm wow, just you just gave me the chill. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Everywhere wow. I go all around the world, you're like, oh my Jesus. God, you're extraordinary. Yeah, because it lets you off the hook. You get to play like, oh, well, if I had it like her. No. What if you do? What if you do? What if the God that we call God, the divine, whatever your faith is, what if there's no partial? It's not going to give me a hookup and not give you one. Not going to give me an opportunity and not give you one. I'm just going to go after it. If I die, I'm going to die on a treadmill, like Will Smith said. I'm going to be on the treadmill running. You know, I'm, not, I'm just not going to stop because I believe all things are available to us. I'm just willing to go after them. Are you willing? And then that is so disruptive because then you got to make a decision because yeah. it's easier to live inside the parameters of, well, as a black woman, well, as born and raised in South Central, well, I'm academically, I'm dyslexic. I'm dyslexic. I wrote seven books. I'm dyslexic. You know, I just, I just tell good stories. I'm just not the one to edit the book because then, <laughs> <laughs> then we all in trouble. I'm going to put a period at the beginning of the sentence, right? And so, and so just knowing, like, I'm not perfect. What I do really well is I manage my imperfection well. And so we're all waiting for perfect. It's an illusion that will never come to you and it's an excuse to never show up and play. Your story is not meant to be your fortress. Your story is meant to be your fuel. Yeah. Any story. Like the fact, the beauty of me being one of the top 1% earners in America is that I was on government's assistance. Right. Like that's the beauty. Like, come on, it wouldn't be a big deal if my family was rich, <laughs> or whatever. Like it, I'm supposed to do something. The beauty is that when you show the little engine that could story, mm. like I'm not gonna run fast, but I ain't gonna stop running. I might slow down and have to breathe and catch my breath, but I'm not stopping. Cause I believe all things are available to all of us and good people should do well. Because when good people do well, good people just do more good in the world.